In the coming century, Rome would be brought to the brink of annihilation as the armies of Constantinople and the Ostrogoths descended upon it. But a new light began to shine in 508 when King Clovis I of the Franks was baptized as a Catholic. The darkness receded further in 519 when Byzantine Emperor Justin I, unable to maintain ecclesiastical union with Syria and Egypt, sought reunion with Rome and compelled his bishops to submit to the formula of Pope Hormisdas, which affirmed Leo's tome and declared that all who did not agree with the Bishop of Rome were not in communion with the Catholic Church. However, the Myophysites in Syria and Egypt refused to accept the formula Leo's tome or the Council of Chalcedon. The Catholic Church finally brought an end to the Pelagian controversy at the Council of Orange in 529, which condemned semi-Pelagianism, the doctrine that humans of their own effort without the help of the grace of God can come to faith in the desire for baptism. In the East, new Byzantine Emperor Justinian I began a campaign to recapture the Western Empire, beginning with the successful conquest of North Africa from the Vandals in 533. Justinian then sought to conquer Italy from the Ostrogoths. He captured Rome in 536, but the Ostrogoths counterattacked and besieged the city in 538, and finally sacked the city in 546. The Byzantines retook the city, but the Ostrogoths sacked it a second time in 549. The Byzantines finally captured Rome for good in 552. The constant fighting left Rome almost completely destroyed, from a population of over a million people at the time of the Apostles Peter and Paul, the population of Rome fell to a mere 50,000. Justinian's ambitions were disrupted in 541 when plague broke out in Constantinople, rapidly spreading across the Byzantine Empire. 10,000 people a day died in Constantinople. Justinian himself was infected but survived. The Byzantine Empire was greatly weakened. Monasteries in Italy during this time were frequently relaxed places where members of wealthy aristocratic families lived a life of leisure. St. Benedict attempted to change this by introducing the Rule of St. Benedict, which established a strict regimen of work, prayer and study. Benedict's rule was so strict that one monastery attempted to poison him twice. Over the next five centuries, the Rule of St. Benedict would become the predominant rule of monastic life in Western Europe. While the Ostrogoths were besieging Rome in 545, Emperor Justinian brought Pope Vigilius I to Constantinople, where he stayed at the Placidia Palace and was safe from the constant fighting that was destroying Rome. At Constantinople, Emperor Justinian put pressure on Pope Vigilius to condemn the three chapters, certain Nestorian writings from the previous century. Justinian believed their condemnation would help bring reunion with the Myophysites in Syria and Egypt. The writers of the three chapters had died in the previous century, and two of the writers had been reconciled to the church at the Council of Chalcedon. Pope Vigilius was reluctant to posthumously condemn these writers, but eventually consented to the condemnation issued by the Fifth Ecumenical Council in 553. In 555, three years after Rome had been safely restored to the Byzantine Empire, Pope Vigilius left Constantinople for Rome, but died on the journey. The Byzantine Empire was severely weakened by the plague and decades of fighting the Ostrogoths, which allowed the Germanic Lombards to invade Italy in 568. The Lombards conquered most of the peninsula except for the Exarchate of Ravenna, a narrow corridor from Ravenna, the capital, to Rome. The Byzantine Emperor continued to rule the Exarchate of Ravenna and required his consent to all elections of the Pope, resulting in the era of the Byzantine Papacy. In 587, King Ricard I of the Visigoths converted from Arianism to Catholicism. Pope Gregory the Great reigned from 590 to 604. He reformed the church and sent missioners throughout Europe. In 588, John the Faster, Bishop of Constantinople, claimed the title of Ecumenical Bishop or Universal Bishop, but Pope Gregory refused to permit the title, affirming papal supremacy and the rank of the three Petrine Seas of Rome, Alexandria and Antioch above Constantinople. 
In the east, the Byzantine Empire faced a new threat as a migrating tribe from Asia, the Avars, invaded the Balkans. Pagan Saxons had conquered England after the fall of the Roman Empire. Pope Gregory the Great sent Augustine of Canterbury to evangelise the Saxons in England, and Augustine became the first Archbishop of Canterbury in the year 597. In 602, war erupted between the Byzantine Empire and the Sassanid Empire. The Sassanid Empire gained early victories, conquering Antioch in 613, Jerusalem in 614, Anatolia in 617, and Alexandria in 618. However, the Byzantine Empire rallied under Emperor Heraclius and defeated the Sassanid Empire at the Battle of Nineveh in 628, regaining all of its lost territory. In the year 633, Melkite Patriarch Cyrus of Alexandria reached an agreement with the Coptic Church that there is one energy or faculty of action in Jesus, the doctrine of monothelitism. The monk Sophronius, who had become Patriarch of Jerusalem, staunchly opposed monothelitism and protested to Patriarch Sergius of Constantinople that there were two energies in Jesus, diothelitism. Sergius proposed to Pope Honorius I in Rome that the Church should prohibit the discussion of one or two energies altogether. Sergius mentioned as a side note that the doctrine of two energies might lead people to believe there are two contrary wills in Christ. Pope Honorius wrote back agreeing with the proposal to prohibit the discussion of one or two energies. Honorius also mentioned as a side note that Jesus has one will, because when Jesus assumed human nature, Jesus assumed the nature we had before Adam's fall, not our vitiated nature tainted by original sin. Honorius, personal secretary, successor Pope John IV, and Maximus the Confessor, defended these statements, saying that Honorius had only denied the existence of a sinful will in Christ's human nature, not the existence of a human will altogether. Meanwhile, in Mesopotamia, the Arab Muslim Rashidun Caliphate had risen up against the Byzantine and Sassanid empires. To the shock of both empires, the Arabs defeated the combined forces of the Sassanid and Byzantine empires in the Battle of Firaz in December 633. Tessaphon, the capital of the Sassanid Empire, fell in March 637. In the same year, the Rashidun Caliphate captured both Antioch and Jerusalem. With the borders of his empire collapsing, Emperor Heraclius was annoyed to find his bishops quarrelling over monothelitism. Honorius, Sergius and Sophronius all died in 638, and Heraclius issued the Ecthesis, which prohibited discussion of one or two energies in Christ and affirmed that Jesus has only one will. The Melkite Patriarchs of Constantinople, Antioch, who following the fall of Antioch to the Sassanid Empire, resided in Constantinople, and Alexandria, all affirmed the Ecthesis. But Pope Severinus I condemned the Ecthesis and affirmed that there are two energies and two wills in Jesus Christ, human and divine. Alexandria fell to the Rashidun Caliphate in 641. Rome and Constantinople were the only seas that remained in the Byzantine Empire. They remained in schism for the next 40 years. Meanwhile, Myophysites in Syria and Egypt welcomed the Rashidun Caliphate as liberators and joined in the fight against the Byzantine Empire. Eager to bring an end to the quarrel among his bishops, Emperor Constance II in 648 issued the Typus, which ordered the Church to cease all discussion of one or two wills or energies in Jesus. Pope Martin I refused to comply and was seized by Byzantine troops and died in prison after refusing to renounce diatheletism. Maximus the Confessor left Constantinople for Rome, but he too was arrested and died in prison for refusing to renounce diatheletism. Meanwhile, the Rashidun Caliphate was divided in a civil war and replaced by the Umayyad Caliphate in 661, which reached the outskirts of Carthage in 665. The Umayyad Caliphate conquered Anatolia and besieged Constantinople from 674 to 678. The Byzantine Empire used Greek fire against the Umayyad navy for the first time in recorded history. To add to the Byzantine Empire's troubles, a new tribe from Central Asia, the Bulgarians, had invaded Thrace in 670, 
pressing as far as Thessalonica. In Italy, King Aripert I of the Lombards converted from Arianism to Catholicism in 653. The Lombard kings remained firmly Catholic from the time of King Percturet, bringing an end to the Arian rulers of the Germanic tribes in Europe. Finally, in 680 to 681, Emperor Constantine IV submitted to Pope Agato I and convened the Sixth Ecumenical Council, which condemned monothelitism and affirmed diothelitism. By this point, the Myophysites in Egypt, Syria and Palestine were no longer part of the Byzantine Empire, and the Emperor had little reason to continue compromising with them. The Sixth Ecumenical Council condemned Pope Honorius as a heretic for following Patriarch Sergius, but Pope Leo II changed the condemnation condemning Honorius for negligence rather than heresy. In 692, the Byzantine Empire held a Council of Eastern Bishops in Constantinople, the Quinisex Council, also known as the Council in Trullo, which condemned certain practices in the Western Church, including the depiction of Jesus as a lamb. When Pope Sergius I refused to accept the Council, Emperor Justinian II sent soldiers to arrest the Pope, but Justinian's soldiers were repulsed by local militia in Ravenna, who were loyal to the Pope. In response to the Quinisex Council's prohibition of depictions of Jesus as a lamb, Pope Sergius introduced Agnus Dei into the liturgy of the Roman Mass. The Roman Church never accepted the Quinisex Council. The following year, the Umayyad Caliphate captured Carthage. They would complete the conquest of North Africa in the following decade. Monothelites continued to hold influence in Constantinople. In 711, Emperor Philippikos Bardanes ascended the throne and installed a monothelite, John VI, as Bishop of Constantinople, who convened a synod that revoked the Sixth Ecumenical Council. Pope Constantine excommunicated them. At the same time, Bulgarians plundered Thrace up to the walls of Constantinople, and the Byzantine army rebelled against Philippikos blinding him and installing his secretary as Emperor Anastasios. Anastasios reinstated the Sixth Ecumenical Council and deposed the monothelite Patriarch John VI, replacing him with the Orthodox Patriarch Germanus in 715. The Umayyad Caliphate invaded Spain in 711 and destroyed the Visigoths. The Umayyad Caliphate then invaded Gaul, where they met Charles Martel, Prince of the Franks, at the Battle of Tours in 732. Charles Martel defeated the Umayyad Caliphate, who retreated to Iberia, leaving Gaul under the control of the Franks. The Umayyad Caliphate laid siege to Constantinople from 717 to 719. Emperor Leo the Osorian enlisted the help of the Bulgarians who forced the Umayyad Caliphate to retreat. Leo feared that the empire had lost favour with God due to the veneration of icons. In 730, he issued an edict prohibiting the veneration of icons and installed an iconoclast Anastasios as Patriarch of Constantinople. Pope Gregory II condemned Leo's iconoclasm, and St. John of Damascus, living in Umayyad-held Damascus, wrote a firm defence of the veneration of icons. Leo's successor Constantine V zealously enforced iconoclasm, declaring, He cannot be depicted, for what is depicted is one person and he who circumscribes that person has plainly circumscribed the divine nature, which is incapable of being circumscribed. In February 754, Constantine convened a synod of Eastern bishops who voted in favour of iconoclasm. By the end of Constantine's reign, iconoclasm had gone as far as to brand relics and prayers to the saints as heretical. Meanwhile, with the Byzantine Empire distracted by wars against the Bulgarians and Muslims, Lombard king Eistolf captured Ravenna in 751, ending over two centuries of Byzantine rule. Following the Lombard conquest of Ravenna, Pope Zachary appealed for help from Pepin the Younger, whom he crowned King of the Franks. The Franks invaded Italy and conquered the Lombards, and granted most of the former exarchate of Ravenna to the Pope as his temporal domain, which would become known as the Papal States. This marked a significant new era in the papacy, which for the previous 200 years had been under the relatively stable protection of the Byzantine Empire. For the next 800 years, the papacy would find itself at the centre of seemingly unending conflicts between Italian principalities and Europe's great powers. The popes of Rome continued to oppose Byzantine iconoclasm. 
Emperor Constantine VI finally relented and allowed the Seventh Ecumenical Council to meet in 787. The council had to meet in Nicaea, site of the First Ecumenical Council in 325, because the city of Constantinople was under iconoclast rule. The Seventh Ecumenical Council agreed to the demands of Pope Adrian I and affirmed the orthodoxy of the veneration of icons of Jesus, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the angels and the saints. On Christmas Day in 800, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne, Holy Roman Emperor, at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. While the Byzantine Empire saw it as a betrayal since it had been the guardian of the faith for the past 400 years, the Pope hoped it would usher in a new era of stability and independence and free the papacy from outside political meddling. Instead, Charlemagne's empire would quickly splinter after his death, and the papacy would find itself at the mercy of whichever Italian principality happened to have the most power at any particular moment. In 823, King Harald Klack of Denmark was baptised, and Catholic missionaries continued to spread the gospel in Norway and Sweden. In 815, Byzantine Emperor Leo V reinstituted iconoclasm. Pope Pascal I offered persecuted Byzantine monks refuge in Rome. Saint Theodore the Studite in Constantinople wrote zealously against iconoclasm. Finally, in 843, Byzantine Emperor Michael III deposed the iconoclast Patriarch John VII of Constantinople, replacing him with Patriarch Methodius I, which brought an end to Constantinople's second era of iconoclasm. In 827, the Abbasid Caliphate launched an invasion of Sicily and southern Italy, which had been under Byzantine rule. In 846, the Aglabits, vassals of the Abbasid Caliphate, and known to Italy as Saracens, landed in central Italy and defeated the local Roman militia. The Saracens plundered all of Rome outside the Aurelian Wall, including St. Peter's Basilica, where Pope Leo III had crowned Charlemagne Holy Roman Emperor just 46 years earlier. In response, Pope Leo IV called together a fleet from neighbouring Italian principalities that defeated the Saracen navy at the Battle of Ostia in 849. Missionaries Cyril and Methodius converted the Slavic tribes of Central Europe in Great Moravia and Pannonia from 862 to 885 and brought these tribes into communion with Rome. In 858, Patriarch Ignatius of Constantinople was deposed and a layman, Photius, was appointed Patriarch by Emperor Michael III. Ignatius and Photius both appealed to Pope Nicholas I, who recognised Ignatius as rightful Patriarch. Rome and Constantinople fell into schism until 867, when Nicholas died and Photius was deposed by new Emperor Basil I. In 864, Khan Boris I of Bulgaria was baptised into the Catholic faith and sought competing offers from Rome and Constantinople as to which patriarchate he should belong to. In 869, the Fourth Council of Constantinople affirmed the deposition of Photius and prohibited criticism of the Pope. It also affirmed the veneration of images of Jesus, his mother Mary, the angels and the saints, and recognised Constantinople as the second highest see in the church. Photius became Patriarch of Constantinople for a second time in 877, and held a council in 879 revoking the Council of 869. The Council of 879 was not accepted by Rome. In the 9th century, the pagan Magyars migrated from Central Asia to Eastern Europe and conquered present-day Hungary, from where they launched raids against the scattered principalities of the former Carolingian Empire. At the same time, Vikings from Scandinavia harassed the coast of Northern Europe and England. The Carolingian Empire had been established with the crowning of Charlemagne in 800, but his successors were unable to keep the empire united. The Carolingian Empire split apart for good in 888. In the absence of a strong central power in Western Europe, the papacy found itself at the mercy of local Italian principalities, while the Abbasid Caliphate conquered Sicily and central Italy, coming within striking distance of Rome. Leo VI became Byzantine Emperor in 886. He banished Photius and liberated southern Italy from the Abbasid Caliphate, but lost Sicily and failed in an attempt to retake Crete. In 907 and 911, Kievan Rus laid siege to Constantinople, forcing the negotiation of a favourable trade treaty. Although Photius had attempted to convert Kievan Rus 
to Christianity, the king and a majority of the people remained pagan until the end of the 10th century. Norse Vikings had been raiding northern Europe since 820. In 911, Charles III, king of West Francia, negotiated an agreement with Viking leader Rollo that granted the Vikings territory in northern France, which became known as the Duchy of Normandy. The Normans would come to play a major part in church history in the coming centuries. The disintegration of the Carolingian Empire allowed Count Theophylact of Tusculum in Italy to attain de facto rule over Rome. Theophylact and his family used their power to control elections to the papacy in the early 10th century, an era called the Seculum Obscurum, the Dark Age of the Papacy. While Rome was dominated by the Count of Tusculum, monasticism and church discipline declined across Europe as the Carolingian Empire disintegrated into countless separate fiefdoms. In 910, Saint Berno became abbot of the new Abbey of Cluny and immediately enforced a strict interpretation of the rule of Saint Benedict. In the following century, a new line of popes would emerge from Cluny Abbey to reform the church and defy the Holy Roman Emperor. The Abbasid Caliphate captured central Italy in the late 9th century, threatening Rome itself. In 915, Italian forces under the command of Pope John X and Byzantine forces from southern Italy attacked the main Abbasid fortress on the Garigliano River in central Italy. The Abbasids were defeated and driven from mainland Italy back to Sicily. Otto, Duke of Saxony, united the German territories of the former Carolingian Empire and restored the Holy Roman Empire. Otto brought an end to the Magyar raids against Europe with his victory at the Battle of Lechfeld in 955, earning him the reputation as the saviour of Christendom. In 961, Otto conquered Italy and was crowned Holy Roman Emperor at St. Peter's Basilica in 962. Otto also negotiated a peace that permitted the Byzantine Empire to retain southern Italy. More kingdoms of northern and eastern Europe converted to Christianity in the 10th century. In 966, Mieszko, Duke of Poland, was baptized. In 988, Vladimir the Great, Grand Prince of Kiev, was baptized. In 995, Olaf Tryggvason became the first Christian king of Norway. Sweden and Magyar Hungary remained two of the few pagan countries left in Europe. Nubia, modern Sudan and Ethiopia, had been loyal to the Patriarch of Alexandria from the beginning of the church. Nubia followed the Coptic church and adopted Myophysitism. The Nubian kingdoms of Nobatia, Mercuria and Elodia reached the peak of their power in the 10th century before eventually being overrun by the Abbasid Caliphate. By the beginning of the 11th century, the Byzantine Empire had recovered much of its former territory and reasserted itself as the dominant power in the eastern Mediterranean. Antioch, Syria and Palestine, north of Jerusalem, were recaptured by the empire before the turn of the millennium. Under Emperor Basil II, the Byzantine Empire conquered Bulgaria, the Crimea and the southern Caucasus. In the year 1001, Stephen I became the first Catholic king of Hungary, and in 1008, Olaf Skutkuning, king of Sweden, was baptized as a Catholic. 1,000 years after the birth of Jesus Christ, all of Europe was united in the Catholic faith. The kingdoms of Nubia had spread Christianity into sub-Saharan Africa, and the Church of the East had brought Christianity as far east as China. The Byzantine Empire had been restored to its former glory, and Rome and Constantinople had gone over 100 years without a schism. But tensions in southern Italy and a new threat from Central Asia would soon lead to an enduring schism in the heart of Christendom. In the early 11th century, Lombards in southern Italy rebelled against the Byzantine Empire and recruited mercenaries from the Duchy of Normandy in northern France. The Normans were granted land in return for their service and quickly became the dominant power in southern Italy. The Norman use of Latin Rite worship with unleavened bread created conflict with local Byzantine citizens who used leavened bread which they viewed as symbolic of the resurrection. Pope Leo IX came to view the Normans as a threat and raised an army to assist the Byzantine war against the Normans, but he was defeated by the Normans at the Battle of Civitate in 1053. In 1051, Benedictine monk Peter Damian urged the Pope to correct widespread problems in the clergy 
particularly the lack of celibacy. The purchase of clerical offices, a practice that was named simony after Simon Magus, who sought to buy the gift of laying on hands from the Apostle Peter, and the appointment of bishops by secular rulers, which was known as lay investiture. The attempt by the popes in the coming decades to correct these vices would lead to confrontation with the Holy Roman Emperor. Peter Damian also began the fundamental debate of the second millennium concerning the relationship between reason and faith, arguing that philosophy should be used in a manner consistent with the Christian faith. Patriarch Michael Cerularius in Constantinople was angered by the Norman disturbance in southern Italy and wrote a letter criticizing their liturgical practices. He also closed Latin Rite churches in Constantinople in reprisal for Norman closings of Byzantine churches in southern Italy. Pope Leo IX sent Cardinal Humbert of Silva Candida to negotiate with Cerularius, but Cerularius refused to meet with him. After months of waiting, Cardinal Humbert delivered a notice of excommunication against Cerularius on July 16, 1054, but Pope Leo had died three months earlier, so the excommunication had no effect. Nevertheless, Cerularius removed Leo's name from the diptychs in Constantinople. In 1066, William the Conqueror defeated Harold II of England at the Battle of Hastings. William became King of England. In southern Italy, Pope Nicholas II made peace with the Normans, investing Norman leader Robert Guiscard as Duke of Southern Italy and Sicily. The Normans finished their conquest of Byzantine Southern Italy and Sicily in 1072 and turned their sights on the Balkans, where Norman leader Robert Guiscard defeated the Byzantine Empire in a series of battles and established a short-lived Norman foothold. However, the Normans were urgently recalled to Italy by Pope Gregory, who was under siege by Emperor Henry IV of the Holy Roman Empire. By 1073, the Holy Roman Empire had fallen from its heights under Otto I and was facing fragmentation and decentralization as various principalities challenged the authority of Emperor Henry IV. Meanwhile, Pope Gregory VII was attempting to reform the church by restoring priestly celibacy, ending simony, and ending lay investiture, the appointment of bishops by the secular king. This last reform brought Pope Gregory into conflict with Emperor Henry, and after the emperor attempted to depose Gregory, Gregory deposed and excommunicated the emperor. After several attempts at reconciliation, Emperor Henry IV invaded Rome and appointed Guibert of Ravenna as anti-pope Clement III. Robert Guiscard defeated Emperor Henry IV at Rome, but following the victory, Robert Guiscard's Norman soldiers plundered the city. After three days, the people of Rome rose up against the Normans, but the Normans suppressed them and set fire to much of the city. Pope Gregory VII was exiled and died shortly thereafter. Robert Guiscard's army left Rome to focus on their war with the Byzantine Empire, leaving anti-Pope Clement III, who was loyal to the Holy Roman Empire, in control of the city. The next two popes, Victor III and Urban II, were forced to reign from outside the city until 1096, when a French army called to the Crusades by Pope Urban II liberated Rome and allowed Pope Urban to safely return. The foremost theologian of the 11th century was Bishop Anselm of Canterbury, who introduced the ontological proof for the existence of God argued in favor of the procession of the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son, and taught the satisfaction theory of the atonement, that Jesus Christ offered himself on the cross, not merely as a ransom to the devil, but in satisfaction of the debt of honor that mankind owed to God. Anselm became embroiled in what would become the fundamental philosophical debate of the second millennium concerning the relationship between universals and particulars. The Latin world had generally accepted the realist philosophy of Plato and Aristotle, that universals have a real existence. Late in the 11th century, a French philosopher named Roscelin challenged realism and introduced the philosophy known as nominalism, teaching that only particulars exist and that universals are merely words given to common attributes of particulars. Roscelin also argued that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit were not one God, but three gods. Anselm, a realist, strongly condemned Roslin's teachings, but the cause of nominalism would be taken up in the 12th century by the philosopher Peter Abelard. The Seljuk Turks, led by Arp Aslan, 
had migrated from Central Asia north of the Caspian and Aral Seas into Persia and invaded the Byzantine Empire in 1068. In 1071, the Turks decisively defeated the Byzantine Empire at the Battle of Manzikert, effectively bringing all of Anatolia under Turkish control. The Turkish Empire became the dominant power in the Middle East, stretching from Anatolia to the borders of China. Zahir al daula Artuk Bey founded the Artuqid dynasty, which ruled the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea, including Antioch and Jerusalem. Reports soon reached Europe of mistreatment of Christian pilgrims in the Holy Land. In 1095, Byzantine Emperor Alexios I appealed to Pope Urban II for help against the Seljuk Turks. Pope Urban II proclaimed the First Crusade and granted a plenary indulgence to all who joined. A peasant army led by Peter the Hermit arrived in Constantinople in 1096, but they were easily defeated by the Turks upon crossing into Anatolia. The Prince's Crusade succeeded in defeating the Turks in Anatolia. In 1098, they captured Antioch. Meanwhile, Fatimid Arabs had succeeded in liberating Jerusalem from the Artiquid Seljuks. The Fatimids were allied with the Byzantine Empire. Nevertheless, the Crusaders set aside the initial objective of repulsing the Seljuk Turks and sought to reclaim the Holy Land for Christendom. In 1099, the Crusaders captured Jerusalem from the Fatimids after a long siege. The Crusaders slaughtered every inhabitant of the city. In contrast, when the Arab Muslims had captured Jerusalem in 637, they did not kill a single inhabitant. Instead, the Muslim Caliph Umar, son of al khattab calmly entered the city unescorted and toured it with Patriarch Sophronius. The Crusaders defeated a counterattack by the Fatimids at the Battle of Ascalon, and the Fatimids retreated into Egypt, leaving the Crusaders in control of the Crusader states at Antioch, Tripoli, and Jerusalem for the time being. At the start of the 12th century, Pope Pascal II appointed Eric Knupsen, Bishop of Greenland and Vinland, modern-day Newfoundland, making him the first Bishop of America. The investiture controversy that began under Pope Gregory VII and Emperor Henry IV finally came to a resolution between Emperor Henry V and Pope Callistus II with the Concordat of Worms in 1122. Previous Holy Roman Emperors had thought it their right to appoint bishops and to confirm the papal election. The Concordat of Worms significantly reduced the Emperor's power. The King was recognised as having the right to invest bishops with secular authority, but not with religious authority. The Melkite Patriarch of Antioch, Anastasius II, died in 609, and Constantinople began to appoint a series of titular patriarchs, who resided not in Antioch, but in Constantinople. In 685, the Maronites elected Bishop John Maron of Betrun as Patriarch of Antioch and all the East. The Maronites welcomed the Crusaders and sought reunion with Rome. In 1131, reunion was granted, and Maronite Patriarch Gregorius al-Halati was recognised by Pope Innocent II as the rightful Patriarch of Antioch. Early in the 12th century, a professor at the University of Paris named Peter Abelard planted the seeds of rationalism that would come to dominate philosophical thought in the second millennium. Abelard championed the use of Aristotelian logic regardless of whether it led to orthodox theological conclusions. Abelard was accused of denying the separate existence of the three persons of the Trinity and of teaching that Jesus did not atone for humanity's sins but merely set a good example for his disciples to follow. Abelard's innovative ideas brought him into conflict with the Catholic hierarchy and Saint Bernard of Clairvaux. By the beginning of the 12th century, discipline in monasteries had once again declined. The Cistercian movement sought to restore monasteries to the austerity of the rule of St. Benedict, with an emphasis on manual labor.